What's up, y'all? Sorry about this late video. Uh, I'm just going to make it brief, but fundamentals of electricity is needed. I mean, it's absolutely warranted in, in this type of a field and, or this type of a school because in this school they do, you know, multiple areas of, of the tech field and, and trades. And, uh, you know, it's needed, but it's boring. I hate to be like this, but, you know, the teacher's legit. I mean, he's cool, and he was so upfront in the beginning. He's, there's about 84 pages worth of notes that you're going to take in this class, and that's going to be frustrating. Um, but it's just, you know, it's boring. But We're learning three-phase and one-phase circuits. Uh, we're learning all of the symbols that will be in a diagram. We're learning um, the way that electricity moves, the difference between AC and DC. Uh, <laughs> let's see what I did there. Um, we're learning about how electric, how electricity moves. Where you know, with neutrons, protons, and electrons, and and uh, all of that. But in somewhere in this video, maybe like right now, I don't know. I'm gonna put some pictures up of this, just some of the notes that I've taken in class, so that you can see them for yourselves. But uh, coming up, we have a test on different um, circuits. Uh, and basically the breakdown of them and the L1, the L2 and uh, you'll see on these little flashcards that we had to make there's a test coming up on these four different circuits uh, but and maybe I'll put them somewhere here in the video um, but the one thing is I was able to shoot a video outside at my unit but for the the, the, the sweep or purge and sweep process and it's a process that I was taught here in school uh, so that when you connect your manifold set to your, your condensing unit, it's so that you don't get any air into your system um, and, you know, mess with the way that the unit's running. So I, I will put that video after me talking. Um, I think my editing skills are getting a little better. But I just, I'm trying to make these videos a little more in-depth, but a little easier for y'all so it's not just some bastard on the, te or on the phone or whatever you're using just throwing some jalopy shit together and making it look stupid. Um, but fundamentals of electricity is, it's what it is. But the fun stuff is coming, you know, me working on the boards, me actually doing hands-on things where I will be taking more pictures. Um, and I will be having more information to talk about. And I'll try to get some videos and stuff like that. But uh, just stay tuned right after this, me talking here. You're going to have the video of me working on doing the purge and sweep process. But any questions or comments, post them below. I appreciate everyone's support. And I want to thank you all for watching. See you next time. So this is going to be the purge process that was taught to my class in school. Effectively, we're going to start from the high side to the low side of our manifold. So to walk you through real quick, first, we'll attach the high side to the high side liquid line. Open the ball valve, open the manifold all the way, crack the utility line, allow a little refrigerant to come out to make let us know that these lines are both purged of air and anything that can get into our system. We'll close the high side of the manifold, but not the ball valve. Then we'll go to the low side, with the blue line. We'll attach that to the suction line, which is a larger, the larger line on your system. Open the ball valve, crack its line up here attached to the actual uh, manifold. For about one second again, let some refrigerant come out and ensure that there's no air. And then you've effectively attached your gauges to the system itself without allowing air to get in the system. Okay, so let's start the purge process. Step one, get your high side hose with your ball valve and put it on the liquid line as such. Remember, this is 100% liquid until it reaches the metering device, at which point it becomes an 80-20 split. After attaching it, open the ball valve. You'll immediately start to get a pressure reading. These readings aren't going to be 100% accurate because my system's only been running for about five minutes. After that, fully open your manifold on the high side. Your yellow line is your utility line. Crack it. I know immediately I have no air in that line. 
close that line on the manifold high side. After that, take your blue line off, attach it to the larger line on your system, which is the suction line. If I can get this damn thing on. If it wants to go on. Okay, had a little trouble there getting the damn line on, but it's on. After getting the blue line on, open your ball valve. With your ball valve open, just like the high side, you'll immediately start getting a reading on your system. Now with this side of the, ball, of the manifold, you are not going to open the actual manifold. All you'll do, crack your line. Make sure there's nothing in there. We're good to go, nothing's in there. Now, with that break, we've effectively attached our gauges to our unit. So, our gauges are attached. We're getting a reading. Looks like my head pressure might be a little low. That could be a sign of low refrigerant, I mean anything. But my low side of the unit looks perfect. I'm not taking superheat, I'm not taking subcool right now. The only thing I'm doing is teaching us how to properly put these onto the system and make sure we don't get air in non condensables. And then we're going to take them off of the system so, again, we don't get air in non condensables into the system. But nevertheless, I'm not worried about these pressures right now. I rent this home, so if there is an issue, I'll call the landlord so he can pay for it. But just for the fact of the matter, this is what we're learning in school. I wanted to show each and every one of you. So now, let's go ahead and reverse the process. So, first things first, we're going to want to close the ball valve on the red side or the high side, right here. And take it off the unit. After we take it off the unit, go ahead and just attach it back to your gauge like so. Now, I mean, each gauge can look different, but usually this is the standard setup uh, across the field. After that, we want to open the high side of the manifold. The reason being is there's going to be refrigerant left in this line, in this line, and we want that to go this way. So, open this all the way as such. And then we're going to slowly open the blue side. The reason being is that's attached to the suction line, essentially, the compressor is sucking this side of the line back into itself, and this is 100% low temperature, low pressure vapor. It's 100% vapor. Liquid should never go into your compressor, but it can withstand minimal amounts. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize the suction line to take the excess refrigerant in our unit, in our unit manifold and put it back into the system. So you'll see that my pressures are still high. I'm going to slowly open this. What's going to happen? The pressures are going to equalize for both my high and low side. We're going to let this equalize. Once they equalize, we'll close both sides. It's still dropping. So what it's doing again all that excess refrigerant left in my manifold is being sucked back into the unit. It's a very minimal amount, and it's a very minimal amount of liquid, so we're not going to take, take a chance of damaging this compressor. Once you see the pressures are stabilized, go ahead and close both sides of your manifold. Close the blue ball valve, and detach it from your system. Replace the service caps, and you're done. Hey everybody, uh, Mike here. Um, I was just editing the video, and I noticed that I forgot to teach you one last step of the purge and sweep process. Um, it's called de minimis. In a nutshell, de, minim de minimis basically means that you're going to release a very trivial amount of refrigerant into the atmosphere and it's the legal limit. So they call it de minimis. Um, as you can see, I don't know if this is going to be focused or not, but there's still a little pressure on my manifold. 
And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to release that pressure. So basically open your manifold on both sides, utilizing these knobs. What it'll do is it'll allow all of the excess refrigerant to put go right into the middle of your manifold, including your hoses, your service line, or your yellow line. Crack it. And gets rid of all the excess de minimis. This will set both of your high and low side of your manifold to zero for the next usage. Um, so sorry, this is kind of a this is kind of an impromptu video. I wasn't prepared to do this, but I didn't want to forget this and I guess half-ass it. I just want to be again concise, clear, and just be honest. So again, thanks for watching this video. Questions, comments, post them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys.